Zen interconference battle in this week 16 matchup between the New York Giants at 8 and 6 and the Baltimore Ravens at 9 and 5. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. Pam Oliver is coming up in just a bit. Let's talk about Baltimore first. They got off to that 9 and 2 start. They've lost three in a row including their last two at home. That doesn't happen around here for the Ravens on the other side. You've got the Giants who got off to a 6-2 and two start, but they've been inconsistent. How do they come in here today and get a win? Well, they can start by not doing anything that they did last week in that loss to the Atlanta Falcons. I think defensively, the real key for them, they're going to get a heavy dose of Ray Rice. They have got to be able to play the run better than they really have all season long. Offensively, you can talk about a lot of different things. This game comes down to Eli Manning coming off of arguably his worst game of the season. This time of year, Joe, it seems that whenever his back's against the wall, he comes out and plays great. I would expect him to rebound well off of that defeat last week. Take a look at what's at stake in this game for the Giants. Two wins, and they guarantee at least a playoff spot for the Ravens. They clinch the AFC North with a win. Pittsburgh eliminated moments ago by Cincinnati and off we go as Wilson the rookie will take a knee so the Giants will start with it and we'll look at Eli Manning and it has been inconsistent here down the stretch the last handful of games the numbers aren't really all that good yet he's got his team in a position with a win here today and a win next week at home against Philadelphia's defending Super Bowl champs to get back into the playoffs. Starting at the 20. They fake it to Bradshaw, throw it incomplete for Hakeem Nix. Graham was there defending. So now we'll look at different pieces of each team as we give you partial lineups here in week 16. Amat Bradshaw Troy is playing with an MCL sprain. David Wilson will get a lot of action and they're banged up up front with Boss and Snee. Snee's playing with a partial tear in his hip. Second and ten. Hand off to Bradshaw. Suggs was there first. Gain of three. Now we'll look defensively at a group, and it's hard to believe, ranked 26th overall in the NFL. We're not used to that. Suggs playing with one arm. Ed Reed has been answering the bell every week. Nada has been inconsistent this year. McPhee playing with a bad groin. Josh Bynes, former practice squad player, gets a start. But did he come across too soon? Carl Sheffers is our referee. Eli thinks it's against the Ravens. Outside, number 55, defense, five yard penalty, third down. We'll see subs. You're going to see Danell Ellerby. He just hits it on the run. And Ahmad Bradshaw, he's the one responsible in protection, but because he timed it, now he was early. So they end up getting him off sides, but Eli Manning, they are start, they're getting a bead on that snap count, and he'll need to change that up because if they had been able to hold it just a tick longer, the New York Giants would have been punting. They said Suggs, he did come across as well. Brings up third down and two. Direct snap to Bradshaw, running to his right. He won't get it. Out on the edge, Shockey Brown made the play, a loss of two. And it's a quick punt from the Giants to start their day. Well, that's a great job defensively for the Baltimore Ravens. You consider, Joe, how banged they, up they have been. And even in last week's loss to the Denver Broncos, I thought they played exceptionally well early in that game. They come out here today against the New York Giants offense that has struggled the past couple of weeks early and make a big stop. 
Weatherford hits it. Jones takes it in around his 25. And it goes maybe two. Spencer Pazinger downfield to make the stop. Here comes Joe Flacco, and people around here are wondering what's wrong with Joe Flacco. You see his completion percentage. He's still, Troy, very accurate with the deep ball, but he's been a little inconsistent and a little erratic here, and he's turned it over six times the last three games. He's been pretty streaky, to say the least, and the inconsistency is what they've got to eliminate from his game. He's missed throws, Joe during this three game losing stretch that you just don't generally see. Ray Rice starts the day in the backfield. Quick setup and throw Bolden on the outside makes the catch and on first down again of five Williams out there defending. And this is an offense Troy that wants to play up tempo and wants to play no huddle and talking with Jim Caldwell. He made it very clear they want to attack the defense something they did early in the year they've gotten away from it but no Flacco very comfortable in the no huddle here's Rice to his left they get strung out and Rice out of bounds very close to a first down they're going to mark him a yard shy so third down and a yard coming up and we look at this offense for the Ravens Rice they want to get him more touches Torrey Smith back from a concussion he suffered last week problems up front with Orr now on the left side all year Simile is out at right tackle he's the rookie he started out there all season to midfield again at 14 Jim Caldwell in his second week calling the plays as offensive coordinator with a little option from Joe Flacco <laughs> you can see Joe Flacco he's not option off of anyone normally there'll be a defensive end you option it instead he just takes a few steps down the line and pitches it to Ray Rice they're able to pick up a first down something that they were unable to do through a quarter and a half last week so the third down conversion they were one for 12 last week Flacco drops it down to Rice and Ray Rice just hops out of bounds with a gain of seven human Europe out there defending for the Giants and there's John Harbaugh who's in his fifth year and he's taken his team into the playoffs each of the five including this year they've qualified for at least a wild card. Now how about that you know I mean they lose three in a row they wake up on Monday and not only find out that they're still alive in the playoff hunt but they earned a playoff berth with the Pittsburgh Steelers losing later that evening to the Dallas Cowboys second down and three Rice again you want to get Ray Rice some touches that's what they've been screaming for around here in Baltimore he loses one and trail roll and we've seen a lot of number 27 here in the first possession well we sure have and I know that that was somewhat of a criticism on former offensive coordinator Cam Cameron but John Harbaugh didn't feel that that was really fair. He felt that when they have had a lead, that Ray Rice has had plenty of touches. Third down and four. Blitz. Ravens pick it up. Pass is complete. And it depends on the spot. Anthony Allen, who started that play in the slot, is wrestled down right at the marker. And it's a first down. last week the Ravens as I said they were just abysmal on third down but here on this first possession they've converted a couple already and they did huddle after that third down conversion but it is clear that they are putting the pressure on this Giants defense Pierce in the backfield the rookie gets it he suffered a concussion last week as well he's to the 35 a gain of five Kiwanuka on the stop so defensively for the Giants one thing they need to do Troy is stop the run. They also need to get a pass rush and to see the linebackers in the middle. They'll be dealing a lot with Ray Rice today and Webster on the outside is somebody Flacco thinks he can pick on with double moves. Right now the Giants have four linebackers in the game. Pierce gets it on a handoff and shakes one tackle. He's got a first down and much more. Eight 
16 yards on Tom Coughlin's defense down the sideline for the rookie Pierce. The Giants are employing four linebackers whenever the Ravens get into those offensive sets. And you see the poor tackling by the Giants. Last week, by Tom Coughlin's count, they had 18 missed tackles in that game. And here they start this one off with a couple on this drive alone. Confusion defensively for the Giants. They have to call a timeout. First charge, timeout. And so we'll stay Giants. here. How about the I mean, virtually unprecedented move by the Ravens, a 9 and 4 team, to fire their offensive coordinator, Cam Cameron, and they hand the play calling duties to Jim Caldwell, who has not done that ever in the NFL. Well, unprecedented as far as I can recall with a team that was going to the postseason and you know, trying to make some sense of it and visiting with John Harbaugh about it, he said, I don't expect anybody to understand it that's not in the building. And I can appreciate that as a former player. Oftentimes you don't know what exactly is going on, but the reins have been handed over to Jim Caldwell, and it's clear what he wants to do. And that is run an up-tempo yeah. offense and let Joe Flacco hey, try to attack Omaha. these defenses. Yes. Seventh best team in the NFL in the red zone. Here's Jones. Can't make the adjustment for the touchdown working on Webster. Well, they had a shot, and Corey Webster was not able to pick the ball up when it was in flight. You can see Jones, he sees it, he comes back to it. Had that ball been thrown just a little bit closer to him, he's able to make a pretty good play on it. This is an impressive drive by the Baltimore Ravens. Tenth play of it coming up right here. Here's Rice, cuts back, gets away from Jason Pierre-Paul, and spins down for a gain of five, Will Hill on the stop. Now, Ray Rice two weeks ago has a season high 121 yards rushing against the Washington Redskins, and then he comes back last week and you know, didn't do a whole lot against the Broncos. Part of that was because they got behind so early. But they are, they are giving him the ball here. Third down and five. Flacco, Jones got it for a first down. They're saying the ball came out. The line judge is going to say it's a turnover. Jacoby Jones comes away limping. He thinks he was down. Let's take another look. The ball was caught, subsequently fumbled, and His recovered. He is the down there. First down, down the ball down. comes out, and you can see why he was limping as he got his right leg pinned under his body. But it looks like he's got it with his knee down. Yeah, sure does, Joe. And Jacoby Jones has been pretty banged up already coming into this game. This tackle here certainly doesn't help, but the knee on the ground before the ball comes out. So it's a turnover play. It's automatically looked at. And we expect this one to stay with the Ravens, and it would be first and goal at the five. And it looks like yet another third down conversion. So a big improvement from a week ago. It sure is, and, and just watching is on a review. Watching Joe Flacco within the pocket. I mean, he is throwing the ball with great confidence, and he's still there's still some pressure in his face. You know, I mean that's you know, one of the reasons why he hasn't completed as many passes has been there has. There has been pressure in his face here over the last several weeks, and that has altered some of his throws. He's getting some of it here in this game on this possession, but he's delivered the ball well. You like him as a quarterback? Well, I do. I, I you know, when like a lot of quarterbacks in this league, when given some time and receivers are creating some separation, I think that he can play the position as well as anybody. He's just been very inconsistent. Some of that has had to do with him, but I think he's more than capable in this league to do the things the Ravens want to do with him. Wonder how Jones can even get up and get to the sideline. He's still limping around as they look at his right leg, but it, it's clear that his right knee is down and he's still got the football. Again, the Ravens with a win. Here today, they win the AFC North. Meanwhile, in the NFC East, it's a three-way tie, and then it comes down to tiebreakers at the start of the day. Washington 
already won today as they won at Philadelphia. It was not easy. New Orleans, you can see in a final in overtime, wins at Dallas. And so there's still an opportunity, really, for all three teams. That includes the Giants to win that division. It gets a little tricky because of tiebreakers. Here's the call, by the way, on what they said was a fumble. Here's Carl Sheffers. After review, the receiver had possession of the ball and a knee down at the five yard line. Baltimore will have it there. First and goal. Baltimore will not be charged with a timeout. And Jacoby Jones knew it and liked it. And the Ravens three for three on third downs, and they're right up at the line again, ready to go. Well, you can see the Giants trying to communicate, trying to get lined up. It's one of the things that the up tempo offense will do to a defense. They're not wasting any time. Joe, Joe! Lobbed up. Incomplete. Torrey Smith, the intended receiver. Corey Smith coming off a concussion of his own last week and there was some speculation as to whether or not he was going to be able to play Joe ran into him at the facility on Friday and even late afternoon he was unsure what his status was going to be for this game. But it's pretty clear watching the Ravens on this drive they've gone on after Corey Webster a number of times here. Second and goal. Here's Rice. And he ran into Jason Pierre Paul. We welcome in a new audience, and it is a big group of people checking into this game. Giants went three and out. The Ravens have had an impressive first drive offensively. This was initially ruled a catch and a fumble. That was overturned as Jones was overturned, but his knee was down when he lost the football. Now it's third and goal. Jones back on the field. Pass caught. Touchdown, Torrey Smith. So the New York Giants decide to bring pressure, and when they do, they bring these guys, and it locks everybody up man to man. You see the middle of the field. You just got to get Torrey Smith in inside. If he beats Webster to the middle, there's no underneath help. That for Torrey Smith, his eighth touchdown grab. All previous seven touchdowns have come in victories. Ravens 9 and 5 on the season and a 14 play drive. Covered 73 yards in five and a half minutes on the clock. Team that went one for 12 on third down last week against Denver had four third down conversions on that drive, including the touchdown. And it ends with this Joe Flacco, Torrey Smith, and a technical for hanging on the rim. 7 0. Ravens on top. Great drive to start this game for the Ravens. Exactly what they needed after a rough week game last week against Eli's older brother Peyton Manning and the Broncos 14 play drive and a seven to nothing lead seven and a half to go open quarter. Tucker kicks it away and Wilson will take it from the end zone and not make the 20 Adrian Hamilton just added to the active roster downfield to make the stop Jim Hostler. He calls the plays into Flacco on the left, talking to head coach John Harbaugh. Webster, he got a lot of action on that first Raven possession. Giants were shut out in the regular season for the first time since 96, for the first time under Tom Coughlin, who took over in 2004. David Wilson in a tailback, kind of a delay on the toss, and Wilson, the rookie, gets to. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Here's how it ended in Dallas. Each team had the ball in overtime. The Saints marching. 
ball by Marcus Colston fumbled all the way down inside the five. Timmy Graham recovers it. They retain possession, obviously, and then kick a field goal. 20 yards, Garrett Hartley, game winner, 34-31, Saint. Knock off the Cowboys in OT, but Joe, Troy, and Pam, Cowboys still alive for playoff possibilities. Absolutely, we'll talk about that. It's second down and eight. Manning, good protection. Pass incomplete. Victor Cruz, the intended receiver. The Giants, first of all, cannot be eliminated here today because of the Dallas loss. But you look where they sit right now in the wild card chase. Minnesota really helped themselves with a win at Houston earlier today. Seattle plays later tonight at home against San Francisco. But because of tiebreakers, the Dallas Cowboys still next Sunday, if the Giants lose one of the next two games, have a chance to win the division. <laughs> Good luck. Everybody Third got that. <laughs> I know you don't, so I gotta, I'll got to say it slower. <laughs> Third down and eight, and that penalty flag flies. Ball start, number 76, offense, five yard penalty, third down. So they get Chris Snead. It's easy for the Giants to win. They knew coming in, they win their last two games, they're in. But it has not started out well here this evening in Baltimore. No, it hasn't. And Tom Coughlin felt with four games to play that they had to win their last four to get in. And then, of course, after losing to Atlanta, he just kind of figured that maybe their playoff hopes were had ended. And they woke up and realized they had a shot still too by winning their last two games but this has not been a good start for them. So now third down and 13. Manning is hit as he lets it go and the pass incomplete for Pasco. It's fourth down and Manning was close to getting sacked. Well you see him on Bradshaw he had a bow he comes on the blitz and if Bradshaw goes down low and he just fails to make a block on him and so Eli winds up having to get rid of the ball a lot faster than he would like. Now he had a bow he's in the lineup once again today because of the injury to their starter Bernard Pollard. Two three and outs to start the day offensively for the Giants Weatherford. With Jones hauling it in, taking it into Giant territory. Where Tryon made the stop. 13 yard return. They go over playoff possibilities with Troy during the break. Ray Lewis today is missing his ninth straight game with that torn right triceps. He's had it surgically repaired, but he's in week nine of what is at least a 12 week injury. Rice carries it for three, and so that emotional leader is out and just one of, as you've said already, a long list of players defensively not there for the Ravens, yet they were pretty good against Denver, and they've been pretty stout so far against the Giants. Well, they were, and I mean, last week, that's a, that's a good football team there in Denver, and of course, paid Manning, and yet they held down to just 10 points there in that first half. Of course, seven points coming off the interception by Joe Flacco. Flacco's going to air it out. Torrey Smith downfield. What a catch to the one. And they're working on Corey Webster again. Looks like a double move on the outside. You're going to see the play action. Torrey Smith, he's their deep threat. And he gets one on one outside with Corey Webster you see the move there and still he's in pretty good position he just fails to turn and locate the ball and then be able to make a play on it when it's in the air and that's something that Corey Webster has struggled with for much of this season. Play clock is at two and so John Harbaugh sprints down the sideline and calls a timeout. 43 yard completion. To Torrey Smith sets up the Ravens at the one. First and goal for the Ravens, who had their longest drive of the season the first time they had it. 14 plays. 43 yarder to Torrey Smith. Set up this opportunity. Here's Rice. And he is. 
Bowman stopped short. No sign of a touchdown yet. And they're going to mark him just outside the goal line. Second and goal. Well, Ray Rice tries to get right in behind their all pro right guard, Marshall Yonda, who did not play in last week's game. But the Giants do a good job. They've been pretty good overall down here in the red zone. This will be a heck of a stop if they're able to keep the Ravens out of the end zone here. Yeah, the number five in the NFL in red zone defense, the Giants, second and goal. Flacco keeps it. And scores a touchdown. Joe Flacco, his third of the year. They did a good job initially the Giants do of keeping Flacco out but that second surge is able to push the ball then across the goal line and the big play the big play down the field to Torrey Smith sets this one up they're on the one yard line and a 14 point lead if this extra point is good and the Giants once again find themselves playing from a deficit Tucker for the extra point the rookie has been perfect all year. It was a 43 yarder to Torrey Smith to set him up at the one. Been a rough start for the Giants and Corey Webster. Just about 180 miles separate the New York, New Jersey area from Baltimore. Yesterday, the Giants went old school and caught a train from Newark Penn Station, played some cards, watched some movies. And most just hung out during a two hour ride. Pulled into the Baltimore train station around four o'clock. And so far they've come out stumbling out of the gate down 14 to nothing with one of their big emotional leaders, Justin Tuck, out with a bad shoulder today. Yeah, you can't blame it on jet lag. No. No? Wow. But a slow start offensively, two three and outs, and then too much Flacco and Torrey Smith. Wilson out of the end zone. He gets ripped to the ground by Courtney Upshaw, the rookie. Second round pick out of Alabama. He's made seven starts during the season. Let's see where he grabbed him. Got him by the jersey. Pretty impressive there by Courtney Upshaw, who's had a nice rookie season, but to, to pull David Wilson down like that when he's at full speed. That's something. Giants need to make something happen here with their third possession. Manning on first down going for the big one to Randall. Nice catch inside the 35 working on Kerry Williams. Ruben Randall is good downfield for a big one to start the drive 43 yards. Well, the Ravens bring Ehedebo again, and Ahmad Bradshaw once again fails to make a good block on him, and Eli has pressure, and he just heaves this one up, knowing that he's got one-on-one, -on -one, no safety help. And Randall's able to go up and make a play on the ball. Boy, did the Giants need that. 43 yards to Ruben Randall. Okay. is complete to Hickson and Dominic is good for nine go back and take a look at the previous play and you see safety head comes in and Eli he just has to unload it as best he can and give his guy an opportunity but Ahmad Bradshaw who we pointed out is, is, he's been banged up all year but he's playing with a knee injury he's got a brace and that normally he's a much better blocker than he's shown in this game Second down and one. And completes for a first down. That's the tight end, Martellus Bennett. 
And let's go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, you guys have been talking about that injury to Giants running back Ahmad Bradshaw. He is wearing that brace, as Troy said. It's also heavily wrapped. He's not so much worried about re-injuring the knee as he is keeping that knee warm. Talk to offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride before the game. No optimal amount of carries for Bradshaw. First down at the 18. Bradshaw's to the 14, a gain of four. And we showed that knee brace that Bradshaw is wearing, and it, when you're an athlete and you're not accustomed to wearing a knee brace, it is cumbersome. I mean, it's it adds weight, and the biggest problem is it oftentimes slides, and so the hinges aren't where the natural knee bends, and you've got to keep an eye on that as well. And you know, you're out there playing with a leg that feels a lot stiffer than it normally does, and that. That could very well be what has impacted him in trying to make some of these blocks because it hasn't been very good. On second down and six, here's Wilson. Touchdown, New York. And even though his teammates have told him not to do that backflip, the rookie David Wilson with his fourth rushing touchdown does it anyway and celebrates the first Giants points. It's a nice hole here and you're going to see a seal look like it was Bear Pasco who comes in and then he creates the running lane for David Wilson. That's a great drive by New York answering after the Ravens had taken a two score lead. Seven point game and the Giants answer. Flip Wilson up and over. Why not? Giants needed it down by seven. 43 yarder to Reuben Randall set it up. And then Eli just able to settle in. And it's a rushing touchdown for the Giants with Wilson taking it in. Now there's the block by Bear Pasco and Will Beatty, the left tackle, just a good job overall on that play of execution, but it was the big play to Reuben Randall and John Harbaugh in visiting with him said we feel real confident in our ability to stop the Giants as long as we don't give up big plays. They give up the big play and it sets up the touchdown. Tynes will kick it away with Jones waiting deep. This will be returned. Out across the 25 knocked out near the 28 by Keith Rivers. On January 4th, one of the best bowl games of the year is on Fox. Heisman Trophy winner and one of the most talked about players in the country, Johnny Manziel, leads Texas A&M against Oklahoma. AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is January 4th, which is a Friday only on Fox. Yeah, Landry Jones going to Dallas, and you kind of wonder why he was named Landry. And sure enough, I found out this week it was, in fact, named after Tom Landry. On first down, handoff is to Pierce. And they really like what they have in their rookie out of Temple. Flag is down on that 10 yard run. Holding number 81, offense, 10 yard penalty. First down. So they get one of the tougher and more powerful receivers in the league, Anquan Bolden, for a hold on that run by Pierce. Anquan Bolden probably comes into this game a little bit frustrated. He sure was at practice on Friday. He was held without a reception in last week's loss to Denver. And you see it. I, I just think they can call holding on every play if they wanted to. They threw it at the spot where Pierce went out so it turns into first and 10 again after that 10 yard run the 10 yard run. And Pierce over the left side picks up a yard. Jason Pierre Paul out there to make the stop. Under a minute to go at a fast paced first quarter here in Baltimore. Yeah, you know in this first drive we saw Baltimore go to the no huddle and 
was very effective doing that and, and they're huddling more on this possession. Now one of the reasons Joe Flacco said I'd go in the no huddle every play if I could. Now one of the reasons they do huddle some of the running plays that they have get a little wordy and it's easier for them to make those calls in the huddle. On second and nine Flacco keeps it. Throws over the middle of the fielder across his body at least to Torrey Smith who tried to make a one handed grab. And it'll bring up third down and nine. You're really an excellent route by Torrey Smith creating some separation and I thought Torrey Smith could have tried to go up with both hands on that play instead he tried to bring it in with one hand but you know even that throw could have been made a little bit easier for Smith. Flacco's already thrown at Corey Webster six times. Blitz coming from the Giants Flacco goes deep Smith. Pass is almost picked off by Stevie Brown, who's been a takeaway machine with nine on the year. I think Stevie Brown just misplayed it because that ball really floated on Joe Flacco. When he turned that one loose, it was in the air for a while. You see Stevie Brown in the middle of the field, and I think he anticipated that that ball was going to be up the field, but had he have picked it up earlier, that it would have been an easy interception for Stevie Brown. Jason Pierre Paul got there a step too late still laid a hit on Joe Flacco and here's a booming punt by Cook. Hickson from outside the 10. Well covered downfield. Ian Badejo was there first one of the best special teamers in the NFL. The heady was there as well and just a three yard return with three seconds left in the first quarter. back and take a look at that last play and you're going to see Stevie Brown right here and when Joe Flacco turns this loose he's trying to get it to Torrey Smith on the outside it, it really hung up in the air and you see the angle that Brown took and it was the right angle so that they don't beat him deep but had he have been able to pick up that ball a lot easier or sooner that would have been an easy interception and as you said Joe I mean, he has really been a ball hawk since he took over for Kenny Phillips. Starting at the 13 yard line it's Bradshaw. And that's the end of the first quarter. Here at the home of the Ravens in Baltimore Maryland 14 7 Ravens on top Fox NFL Sunday and America's Game of the Week returns after this from your local Fox station. There are the numbers big start offensively for the Ravens after one quarter second down and eight. For the Giants down by seven. Pass is to Hickson. He's got it for a first down. Ridden out of bounds by Shockey Brown, and we go down to the field. Well, Joe, that special teams player who was carted off the field is Marvin Austin. He's in the locker room getting his knee evaluated. His return is questionable. Back to you. Okay, so while you watch Austin leave, here is Victor Cruz who got tangled up on his route. Looked like they banged his knee. They're on the head above. Stays in the ball game at the top of your screen. First down. Trouble down he goes. Nada gets his fifth of the year. Yeah, hello to Nada. You're gonna see him in the middle. He's working against Chris Snee. And he puts a little move on him right there. Snee, as you mentioned, coming in. There was question marks as to whether or not he would be able to go this week with the hip injury, but Nada he kind of puts a wide receiver type move that you'd make on press coverage and gets right by Chris Snee and right into the face then of Eli Manning and a loss of 15 on the sack. Just got it away as Manning finds Hynoski as fullback. Hynoski right into the chest of Danelle Ellerby, a gain of eight. Here's Patrick O'Neill with a game break. 
All right, Joe, here's a playoff scenario that's easy for the Bears to understand. They need to beat the Cardinals or they're making tee times. There's Jay Cutler, Brandon Marshall to the five, very next play. Matt Forte for six. All right, so the Bears up on top of the Cardinals, 14 to three in the second quarter. Joe Troy and Pan. Third down and 17 here. Blitz off the edge. It's a screen for Bennett. And Martellus Bennett won't pick it up. Gets 11. It's fourth down. The Ravens have brought a lot of pressure, as we've shown. This time on third and long, the Giants go with Henry Hynoski as their single back. And to see if maybe he'd be a little bit firmer in pass protection, he does a good job, but they're just not able to pick that up. So a good job defensively there by the Baltimore Ravens getting off the field. Weatherford to punt with Jacoby Jones waiting for it. Good punt. From inside the 10. Well covered. Downfield, that was Will Hill, and just a five yard return after a 60 yard punt. Ravens have it up seven. In the new world order of the Ravens offensively, Jim Caldwell, second week as coordinator, relays them from up in the booth. The Hostler, the wide receivers coach, and he's the one talking to Flacco as the catch is made by Smith for a gain of 11 out on the sideline again, working on Corey Webster. Yeah, so different mechanics all the way around. When Cam Cameron was the offensive coordinator, he was on the sidelines. He would radio him right in to Joe Flacco. Jim or, uh, Caldwell was always up in the press box, but due to NFL rules, he cannot relay them directly to Flacco on the field from the press box. Here's Rice. Not much. Rice with a gain of two. Second down up in the 25. Thought it was interesting, Joe, when we were visiting with Jim Caldwell. He walked in on Monday after that loss to the Washington Redskins at 5.30 in the morning, a normal Monday for him. And by 6.30, he was told that he was going to be calling the plays. And initially, he said, how about Jim Hosler? <laughs> He's, he had called plays in San Francisco back in 2007 when he was the coordinator there. Blanco rolling to his right. Pass is caught. Bolden for a first down. Thirteen yard completion from Joe Flacco. You know, Joe Flacco is a big guy, but he does move pretty well for his size. We saw it last week when he almost ran down and made a play when he threw that interception, but they moved the pocket, and those are the kinds of things that you want to do against the Giants. Get the ball out of your hands, move around, get on the edges. Good execution there by the Ravens. Hand off to Rice. Cuts up field and a nice gain on first down to five. Mosley on the stop. Joe Flacco was talking about it and said, hey, I thought coming into this season we were going to have to be very aggressive. It was going to be a wide open offense, and that's what it was going to take for us to go to the Super Bowl. As we all know, this has been an organization for many, many years that has hung its hat on great defense. And it's time now for this offense to shoulder the load. Here's Rice. Ray Rice with a first down inside the 40. Nineteen yards with good blocking up front. This is that four linebacker set I was talking about. When the Ravens go two back offense with Vontae Leach and Ray Rice, they're going to go with four linebackers, three defensive backs. They feel they can play the run better with that personnel, but they sure did not play it well on that play. Here's the rookie in the game. He gets it over the right side. He's blocked down from behind by Canty. A loss of two. Second down to 12 is Ray Rice. He's already carried it nine times. He's averaging over five and a half yards per carry. This guy's something else. And when he's on the sideline, Bernard Pierce, when he comes in, he's done a nice job with the opportunities that he's had. On second down, he is dragged. 
to the ground. Kenny again. Pierce with a loss of six. Well, that's outstanding after the Baltimore Ravens started getting something going offensively, and they make a good play on first down and then second down. Chris Canty, he just shoots right through that offensive line and is able to make a play on Pierce in the backfield. Big time play. Third down and 18. Williams coming on a blitz. This pass is caught by Golden. Still up and down inside the 10. Bolden in the slot. He's going to run up the seam. Stevie Brown goes to the middle. That opens up that area right there. And Flacco, this time, he has had a tendency to throw the ball high and miss some of these receivers. But Bolden's able to go up, make a play. It's a big time third down conversion on third and long. Hey, let's go. Ravens are five for six on third down. That one good for 39 yards on third and 18. Jones, what a throw, touchdown. Again, it's Corey Webster on the receiving end of a Ravens play through the air. Corey Webster playing up top, and so they run the back shoulder fade. Jacoby Jones comes back and makes a play on it. The question is now, Joe, is they're going to the ground. It's the goal line for a touchdown. Because he crosses the goal line with possession, he then doesn't have to maintain possession all the way through the catch to the ground. But Corey Webster, they have been going after him from the time they've kicked this ball off. It's a nine-yard touchdown for Jacoby Jones. His second receiving touchdown of the year. Now they'll look at it as it's a scoring play. They have to give it a look. You heard the call on the field of touchdown. We'll get the official ruling after the review after this. Check in with Mike Pereira about the review of the touchdown. Mike, what did you see? Well, I think Troy described it perfectly. You know, the book says now control, second part, two feet, third part, an act common to the game, which is deemed to have stretched out, stretched out, trying to score, or trying to get a first down. So you've got the stretch out into the uh, end zone here. You know, to me, by that definition of the rule, that's what you call a second act. So you say touchdown, here's the call. After review, there is no second act common to the game. It is an incomplete pass as he lost possession of the ball as part of the process of the catch. It'll be second down and goal at the nine yard line. So let's it's worth keeping Mike Pereira here. You said this during the break that this crew the look at John Harbaugh's reaction that this crew was criticized for this earlier in the year. You believe that was enough for a second act and uh, this crew disagreed with it. The yeah, same crew had a situation where they ruled that there was a second act going to the end zone and they were told that it wasn't enough of a second act. Although in this situation, and so you can kind of see how that factors in, but in this situation, to me, there was a clear stretch out. And, um, you know, I think that that ruling should have stood. Okay. Thank you, Mike. So now second and goal from the nine. And off is to Rice. And Ray Rice. Takes it down just outside the five. Canty again in on the stop. A gain of four. So third and goal coming up. And that could turn out to be a big reversal of what was initially ruled a touchdown. Yeah, big reversal. And how about if the Giants are able to get out of this drive with just giving up a field goal because third and 18 and they're unable to make a stop. And then they give up what appeared to be a touchdown. And even listening to Mike Pereira, sounded like it probably should have been. They can get out of this just giving up three points. Rice gets it and gets nothing. First guy there was in drill roll, and so after the reversal of the touchdown ruling on the field, it'll be a field goal attempt by the rookie Justin Tucker. And Trail roll, as you said, he gets in there and he's able to make a play. And you know, he was 
extremely upset with his performance last week. A lot of guys fell into that line. Short 23 yard try by Tucker who's had a great first year in the NFL. Free agent out of Texas. They've got a good one. Here are the Ravens. It is a 10 point game. But it could have been more. Initially ruled a touchdown. They said no second act. So an incomplete pass. Harbaugh didn't agree. 17-7 in Baltimore. Another good long drive put together by the Ravens, who were last in the league coming in at 10 player more drives this season. Last in the NFL. They've got two of them. That one was 12, their first one 14, and now kicking it back to the Giants as the Ravens lead by 10. This is Wilson. Shows that great sprinter speed, and he's out across the 30, a good return. And we'll welcome you inside our broadcast booth, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, and we can focus on a team that won earlier today, the Washington Redskins. They've won six in a row. Well they've been one of the most impressive teams in, in all of football here over the last three weeks three and six and of course Mike Shanahan he kind of thought as everyone did that maybe their season was over they're playing for next year they got red hot RG three has been unbelievable and now next week to be playing for a chance to win the division and host a playoff game. It's been a long time since there's been this kind of excitement there in our capital. And think how they did it this year. They beat this Ravens team with Kirk Cousins on the field. Here's Eli just getting rid of it to Amon Bradshaw. And Bradshaw turns what could have been a bad play into an eight yard gain. He had a ball in on the stop with Vines. And let's go to Kirk for a game break. All right, as you guys were talking about, the Redskins won today 27 to 20, knocking off Philadelphia in what could be Andy Reid's final home game as Eagles head coach. More importantly, six straight wins for the Redskins, 27 20, the final. If they win next week, they win the NFC East, but there's still hope for the Giants. More playoff scenarios later, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. Here's Bradshaw with a first down, but a flag flies. And it was the referee, Sheffers, who threw it. Number 76, offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. They get Tom Coughlin's son-in-law, Chris Snee, for a hold. We'll see. He's right here at right guard, and I didn't see much, Joe. I mean, he's got him, and like I said, I mean, they can literally call a hold on every play if they chose to do so. Usually when the arm gets extended outside the body, that's when you'll see a flag fly, but nevertheless, it was a huge game. It just got eliminated. The big weapons for the Giants have been shut out so far. Set of a first down to the Baltimore 44. It's second and 12 at the Giant 33, and a handoff to Hynoski. And the fullback is across the 35. The Giants, if they win today and next week, and they're at home against Philly, they're in the playoffs. They could still win the division. But so could the Dallas Cowboys, believe it or not. If the Giants lose today or next week, and Dallas wins next week in Washington. But it's the Redskins that have it all out in front of them with a home game and a chance to win the East. Third down and nine. Going to air it out for Hickson. And a catch with a penalty flag flying. Working on Shockey Brown, and there was a push off there. It may be against Hickson. Let's get the call. Pass interference, number 87. Offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. So that eliminates a 39 yard reception. I thought it was a good call. Right at the end of this, you're going to see the left arm there that pushes off Shockey Brown and the officials right there to make the call as soon as he extends that left arm the flag comes out and you know Eli had he had been able to get more on it because Dominic Hickson had gotten behind Shockey Brown but it was a ball that was underthrown and Hickson really didn't gain much by extending that left arm it's just kind of a natural reaction he changed direction and try to work back out towards the sideline. So two huge penalties on this drive, one on a hold against Snee, 
And this one on Hickson. Third down to 19. Manning has it knocked away. Picked up by Upshaw. Then he lost it. And now a late call by the referee saying it's an incomplete pass. Really was knocked out by Kruger. Pass for down. So the referee did not make a call until late. Kruger knocked it out, but they said Manning's arm was going forward. Tell you, it was close. It was close as to whether or not it was. You're kind of waiting to see. Mm, I, I don't know that it was, Joe. It looked to me like his arm was still kind of going backwards and normally in that situation they let it play itself out and then go to review and what determine whether or not it was incomplete. Hakeem Nix was in position to go for the ball and recover it and he assumed that it was incomplete. I think the Giants looked to me like they might have gotten away with one. And now a challenge flag is thrown by Tom Coughlin. The interesting part is after Baltimore picked up the fumble Courtney Upshaw lost it and I think what Tom Coughlin is saying is yeah it was empty hand it was a fumble by Eli Manning but then after the Ravens got it they lost it and we got it back but he's going to get a conference with Carl Sheffers about whether he can challenge did you see Upshaw he loses it when he gets hit by Chris Snee. Well, if they go and they rule it a fumble, Joe, it would be my interpretation that the ball is not played throughout, that it would then be Ravens ball because you can't then advance. If they overturn this and say it was a fumble, the defensive player can't first, advance. Further it. explanation, the Giants recovered the ball. There's no advantage to them reviewing the play. It's fourth down, Giants. So there's no advantage to the Giants because of what you're talking about. And if we want to get more specific about it, we could check in with Pereira when we get a chance. But because there's no benefit to the Giants, they won't challenge, and it's fourth and 19. Good punt by Weatherford. I think you're right, though. It looked like Manning's hand was empty when his arm was going forward. Return of 12 yards by Jacoby Jones. Giants trying to get it going down by 10. Mike Pereira will join us to sort through that last really confusing play with what was initially ruled an incomplete pass. Tom Coughlin still getting an explanation from Carl Sheffers. Walk us through that play Mike and what you saw from back in Los Angeles. Hard to walk through anything in this game so far, but okay, here's the deal. The the Giants challenging that it might have been an incomplete, that it might have been a fumble versus an incomplete pass would only mean that the ball would be dead as soon as it was recovered right at this point by Baltimore. And Baltimore would have gotten the ball at that point. And certainly it's close enough to be considered, I think, a fumble. What I can't then figure out is why Harbaugh didn't turn around and challenge it in order to get the ball because I think he would have gotten the ball. Thank you Mike. Instead of punt and then at the end of the play a late flag for a block in the back by Ian Badejo and here is a pass caught by Torrey Smith working on Corey Webster yet again and on first down a completion of 21 yards to number 82. That's a great play by Torrey Smith up this sideline. You're going to see where the ball's located. Great location there by Joe Flacco where only Smith can make a play on it and Corey Webster just he's just not locating the ball in the air Joe. Get it. Get it. Get it. We're worth taking another look at that to see if Smith had it with definite possession before he stepped out of bounds along the sideline doesn't matter now but let's take a look he gets this one handed catch and it was close no challenge by the Giants and they're right there watching it Looked like he had it and a four yard carry now second and six here's Rice again Third short coming up. Well, you see that catch by Torrey Smith. I'm not, I don't think there's anything that Corey Webster could have done differently to defense that. That was just a perfectly thrown ball, and then a, a great job by 
by him of making the catch and keeping his feet in bounds. You know, something seems wrong about the challenge as it relates to Tom Coughlin deciding to challenge it. And yet, to me, the Ravens shouldn't have had to then step in, as Mike Pereira said, to challenge it themselves. The officials, they blew that call all the way around. The challenge was made by Tom Coughlin. You know, at a time when touchdowns don't count when you challenge one of those, it just seems the whole system's a little flawed. Yeah, I would agree with that. What a catch by Torrey Smith. We're at the two-minute warning here in Baltimore. Ravens have it up by 10. Third down and two. Two minutes left in the half. Flacco out to his left. Pass is caught. Went out of bounds. Bolden, they're saying no catch. He grabbed it. Made a clean catch, it looked like. One official's talking to the other. And they may change this call. It looked like he had it. And the officials get together again. This has been a long first half for them. Really on the field as the ball was caught. It is a first down. So even though one official said incomplete out of bounds, the other overruled him. And it's a catch for a first down. Yeah, they were able to get together and then make the right call. And there was the initial bobble there by Anquan Bolden. But once he did regain possession, you know, we saw that he was able to get both feet in bounds. This Ravens offense here in this half has been quite impressive last week. Had a tough go there in the early going against the Denver Broncos and struggled to get anything going. That has not been the case, and that's pretty reflective of how this offense has been all season long. Now we're going to go to a booth review. We're under two minutes to see if this was a catch. So one official overruled the other. The call on the field now is catch. It would be enough for a first down. Go to the booth and then under the hood to see if this will stand. Well, when he finally gains possession, it looks to me, Joe, like his left foot is still on the ground and then his right foot comes down before going out. Does uh, Mike Pereira have an appearance fee or some sort of clause in his contract? Can we check in with him again. Oh, we'll just leave it alone and see what the call is. We'll all be surprised together. There's the AFC North with Baltimore leading here in a win. They win the division. Cincinnati did what they haven't done a lot of. They won earlier today in Pittsburgh to eliminate the Steelers. They lost 10 of their previous 12 to Pittsburgh prior to today. Here's the call. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Baltimore. Mike would have had that one. And the Ravens are now six for eight on third down in this game against the Giants. Well, this is an important possession for this Giants defense. You know, right now, first down and plenty of time, but they can't hardly afford to get down anymore before the half. And no real pressure so far on Flacco. Quick setup and throw, and the pass complete to Bolden for another Raven first down. And this Giants defense that has only two sacks over their last three games. They can't get anything in the face of Joe Flacco. Here's Rice. Hosley on the stop. Rice good for five. Plenty of time left for the Ravens with two timeouts in their pocket. Yeah, and Joe Flacco, he's getting more and more comfortable as this game goes along. First half for the Ravens and for Ray Rice his first touchdown reception of the season from 27 yards out. And Troy, this
this Ravens offense 290 total yards in this first half. 525H post is the call, Joe, and you're going to see Ray Rice. He comes out of the backfield, and he's one-on-one -on, -one on linebacker Bowley, and you just got to beat him to the middle of the field. Joe Flacco, that's the number one read on the route, and Ray Rice runs it perfectly. I know the play because it was a big part of our offense. Cam Cameron ran this play often as well during his time as offensive coordinator. Jim Caldwell calls it. And they executed beautifully. And Cam Cameron's a guy who studied early in his career under your longtime offensive coordinator, North Turner. Yeah, he sure did. He spent a lot of time there in Dallas back when I was playing. And it's an offense that I know very well. And it's a play that I can appreciate because it was my favorite play in the playbook. And when you get a guy like Ray Rice with his abilities and you have him come out of the backfield, with a two way break and him taking the middle on the post route. Good things happen. He leads the NFL in yards from scrimmage since 2009. And while he's had kind of an up and down season. Not much of a factor last week mainly because of a score against Denver. Everything is clicking for the Ravens here in the first half by 17. Wilson takes it out and cannot get to the 20. Here's Kurt Menefee to tell us what's coming up at halftime. Coming up on the party we like to call the Visa Halftime Show, we'll fill your stockings with all the NFL highlights, including an overtime thriller in Dallas. RG3 returns as the Redskins try to take control of the NFC East, and the AFC playoff picture is just about set. So come rock with us on the Visa Halftime. Seeing your reaction watching Jimmy Johnson <laughs> dance like that, he's just he's gone around the corner. Unfortunately, that's not the first time I've seen it. 290 yards of total offense for the Ravens, and now a sack of Eli Manning by Ion Badejo. A pro bowler is a special teams player and now getting a chance to start because of injuries and a loss of seven. Yeah, you called it. He's had to play a little bit more defense than he has really throughout his entire career. He makes a nice play there. And this first half has been all Baltimore. Second down and 17. Down by 17. Pass caught by Cruz. That's his first catch, but it's a small game. A gain of just three. 20 seconds left in the half. We'll see if the Giants want to play around with this anymore or just kind of walk off into the locker room at halftime down by 17 in a game they need. Each side with two timeouts remaining, so see how the Giants want to play it. Same for the Ravens. Blitz pass is caught. That's better. And he goes nowhere. And now a timeout is taken by the Ravens. So they want one more chance. With 10 seconds remaining, they have one timeout left. And, you know, I was going to say, Joe, this has been really something for the Giants. You know, after the way they came out last week against the Atlanta Falcons, coming on the heels of a really nice performance in that win against the New Orleans Saints. And Visiting with Tom Coughlin, you asked him, hey, do you, have, do you even know what to expect from your team in this game? And, and you could tell he could not because he couldn't believe what he saw a week ago in that game. And you know that this has taken him by surprise. He was expecting a much better effort here through the first 30 minutes. When we talked to Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator, you asked him, can you explain what happened in Atlanta? He said, I really can't. And it was just left at that, but they're laying another egg. So far, plenty of time left. Here's Jacoby Jones. And with the clock, never did start. Pazinger on the stop. We'll have one more play from scrimmage. There are the numbers, and the numbers are big. 
for this offense for the Ravens. And really there's pressure on this offense to score points. Their defense isn't what it was. It's injured. It's older. And so far through a half of play against the Giants they have been dominant. So that's it. It'll be a 17 point game at the half. Penalty flag flies as the Giants had too many men on the field. So it's a defensive penalty. And the Ravens will likely decline it and will be finished. Both defenders Keith were Rivers on the field at the snap. Off. That penalty is declined. That's halftime. So there you go. Half a play in the books, 24-7. The Ravens having fun. They can wrap up the AFC North here today. Visa halftime is coming up after this from your local Fox station, 24-7 at halftime. Jingle bell, jingle jingle. Brian Setzer for you as we bring you back to America's Game of the Week, a 24-7 game at the half, and welcoming you back into our booth. I'm Joe, that's Troy, and there was all that talk about, well, the Giants have them right where they want them. Every year they've won the Super Bowl, the last two at least. They've, they've been struggling, and then they get hot. This They need to get something going here quick, or, or their hopes are over. Yeah, they sure do, and yeah, I was one of them who thought they'd come out in this ball game and play a lot better than they certainly have. Give the Ravens a lot of credit. I mean, they typically don't lose here at home. They came into this game having lost their last two home games, and they want to wrap up this division here at home in front of this crowd. Yeah, and uh, assure themselves of another home game week one of the playoffs. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. As the Giants will kick it to the Ravens, the Giants defensively have to figure something out against Baltimore that put together a first half of 289 total yards. And week two much better under the direction of Jim Caldwell than week one. And Flacco's been sharper here today than he was last week against Denver. We start the second half and Jacoby Jones takes it out of the end zone. Hazinger's there for the stop and a 29 yard return down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, it was a litany from Tom, Tom Coughlin. He said that we just got to stop somebody. He also said we got to make more changes on the sideline. Defensive tackle Chris Canty will play this half and Ahmad Bradshaw, Coughlin said, will play some. Back to you. All right, well, Bradshaw dealing with the bad knee. Canty, who made a couple of big plays in that first half, was nicked up on the sideline to start this second half. The rookie Pierce gets it. And Pierce picks up two. And Vault Joseph on the stop, and there are the numbers. A lot of offense from the Ravens and very good on third down as opposed to a week ago. Yeah, I mean, look how good they were offensively on third down. And then, of course, defensively not giving up a third down conversion to the Giants. And you called it Joe Flacco. He was simply amazing there in that first half. Second down and eight. This one was nearly picked by Rivers. He was underneath that trying to get it to Torrey Smith. And Keith Rivers almost gave the Giants a jolt. That's one of the ways that they'll be able to get back into this ball game. They've got to make some key stops. Can't continue to let the Ravens move the ball the way that they have. I think the thing that was probably most impressive in the first half as far as John Harbaugh is concerned is the Ravens controlling the time of clock. Blitz coming from the Giants. Can they get home? Flacco throws and incomplete. Pierce was in the area close enough to it. Human Euro was coming after Flacco, as was Blackburn. Yeah, I guess they, the fact that Pierce was near the ball, even though he was engaged as a blocker, that kept them from throwing the flag because the ball clearly did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Hickson waiting for it. From 
Sam Cook. So a good start defensively to the second half for the Giants. Good punt. Penalty flag is down back near the line of scrimmage and Hickson is out of bounds near the 25. I'm going to mark him out at the 26. The call is against the Ravens. Holding number 32 of the kicking team. That 10 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. Timeout. He had him out. Guilty of a hold. Right there. So decent field position for the Giants. Down by 17. That is. It's got to be the prettiest practice facility we've ever visited that is the home to the Ravens. It is beautiful. It didn't look like a practice facility, no, did it? It didn't. It's amazing. Like a cross between a ski lodge, hunting lodge, and then some football activity going on inside as David Wilson carries it. For one, Courtney Upshaw there on the stop for the Ravens, the rookie out of Alabama, and Bradshaw will check back in. Well, you look at the Giants offensively, I mean, only 15 plays there in that first half, and a big reason for that is their inability to convert on third downs and sustain any drives. Nobody's been able to get in any kind of rhythm because they just haven't had the ball long enough. Second down and nine. It was a good throw. Bennett just missed it, and then Ed Reed couldn't come up with his 62nd career interception. You can see this ball. It's a perfect throw by Eli Manning. Just goes right through the hands of Martellus Bennett. That's a hard one not to be able to make a play on. You're going to see, I mean, should have been an easy catch for a nice game. Went off the leg of Reed, off the face mask of Bynes, incomplete third and nine. Blitz off the edge. Manning throws incomplete. Ian Badejo was there in the face of Eli Manning. Bennett, the closest one to it. It's fourth down. They bring the pressure on both sides. They bring secondary pressure, and then Ian Badejo right up the gut. Despite all these injuries, the Ravens' defense, they've held the Giants to five three and outs in seven possessions. And Manning has been under a lot of pressure. Combination of Cruz and Hicks. Just one catch. Here's Jones. Gets dropped at the 15. Seven yard return. Ravens have it second time, second half. Up by 17. Only three divisional races still alive at the start of the day. You can see what the Giants defense has done over the last six quarters. Atlanta took them apart. Now the Ravens are taking them apart. Pass is caught by Dixon. And a penalty flag comes in at the end of the play. Ed Dixon just his 15th catch of the season. An 18 yard completion but flags are down. Personal foul. Blindside block number 82 offense for contact to the head and neck area of a defender. Half the distance to the goal remains first down. Well that's a big call against Torrey Smith for that block. They said contact to the head and neck area. Crowd sees it on the replay board here and obviously it doesn't agree. Yeah, you know, right now there's you know a lot of talk amongst these defensive players saying that everything favors the offense and as far as the protection and the officials are they're looking for that blindside block and that time they were able to get Torrey Smith with it. Handoff is to Rice. On first down, Rice. Gets four and makes you think of a hit that Rivers got from Heinz Ward 
when Rivers was a part of the rivalry with the Bengals and the Steelers years ago. And now Rivers gets that hit from Torrey Smith. And it wipes away a big completion to Ed Dixon. Second and nine. Here's Rice again. Still fighting as he got to the 20, third down coming up. Yeah, they get him to third down, as we said. The Ravens have been awfully good in this game on third down. And for the Giants, I mean, it's they can't afford to give up any more points. And whether it's their defense not being able to make a play or their offense not being able to sustain drives, they have got to start taking a few more chances defensively. And it's got to come on third down as flags fly. See if it's against the defense for coming across and causing movement on the offensive line or the other way around. And the officials still talking it over. Ball start number 74. Offense, five yard penalty. Third down. They get Michael Orr. For the false start. And the crowd watches, as does John Harbaugh. OCU Manura come across. And the Ravens believe that it was human Manura that caused that false start. Yeah, I would agree with John Harbaugh. It's third down and ten. Here's Rice's penalty flags fly again. And that was weird at the snap. Now it looks like the Ravens are going to get those five yards back. Offside, number 90, defense, five yard penalty, third down. They get Jason Pierre Paul, who does not have a sack over his last five games, and Pierre Paul came across too early. Jason Pierre Paul, he's got the ball right in front of him. He's lining up to the inside, and that's exactly where Jim Caldwell thought he would be to try to test out these offensive guards. Third down pass is caught by Antoine Bolden. And Bolden's got enough for a first down. Another tough catch and a good throw from Joe Flacco. Antrell Roll gets physical with him off the line of scrimmage. And you see the contact, and it was well contested. But Joe Flacco puts it low and away, and Antoine Bolden makes a play. I mean, I couldn't be more impressed with the throws that Joe Flacco has made throughout this game. And He's been a beneficiary of some awfully good catches as well. On first down, Flacco trying to set up a look like a screen. Instead, he hits his fullback, Vontae Leach. Flag is down again as Leach is good for four. Holding, number 74, offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. So there's been a false start, now a hold called against Michael Orr on this possession. Yeah, there was definitely a hold here. Michael Orr, he gets out of position, and Newman Ura takes an inside rush, and then he grabs him. And, you know, that's a that's an area, whether it's been Michael Orr, but mostly the rookie on the other side of Semele, that if you get him pushed up the field and then come underneath with an inside pass rush, those two tackles have struggled, and that's the first time I've seen it in this game, but they catch Orr with the hole. On first and 20, the blitz, here's Rice. Humanura can't bring him down immediately, a game of six. Let's go to Patrick O'Neill for game break. Hey Joe, well, sometimes the Bears' offense isn't always clicking, but the defense this year has been outstanding. This is the eighth INT return for a touchdown and the third of the year for Charles Tillman, 28 to six. Joe, Troy, and Pam, back to you. So an interception for a touchdown. For Tillman. Here's a pass caught outside by Pittum. On second down, and we'll take it down to Pam Oliver. Joe, it will be interesting to see how OCU Manura holds up. He got an IV at the half. The issue was cramps. Meantime, defensive tackle Chris Canty, well, he's just a spectator. Helmet off. Canty had a brace put on that left knee. His return is questionable. Back to you. All right, third down and seven. A down that's been very good for the Ravens today. Flacco to the sideline for Smith and a flag. Corey Webster in coverage. And it's against Webster. 
Well, let's take a look at the release. Corey Webster again. They're targeting him, and he's underneath. And Pass interference, number 23, defense. I don't automatic. know about that one, First Joe. Down. I mean, they have thrown that back shoulder fade a couple of times. They've had success with it. This time, Corey Webster was playing underneath. He had a little bit of help from the safety, and Joe Flacco, he misread it. You know, he really should have gone over the top with it. But as Smith tries to come back and make a play, Webster's there. I'm not sure about that one. So a first down on the penalty, 17-yard penalty against Webster. Jacoby Jones trying to get a block on the edge. Flag is down as Jones picks up about nine and a half. But a flag down. Personal foul, chop block, number 74, offense. 15-yard penalty, remains first down. That's the third penalty on this possession against Michael Orr. Well, the left guard, Ja Reed, you're going to see right here on the end that they felt that Ja Reed was engaged with Matthias Kiwanuka, and then you cannot then go low on him. Ray Rice throwing a block downfield, takes the legs out from under Jaron Hosley. And Michael Orr, you can see his frustration coming back to the huddle. It's now first and 25. Those personal fouls. In the NFL, called against the Ravens. Here's Rice, Limbaugh Joseph is there. Rocky Bernard as well, no game. This has been a <laughs> it's been a pretty wild possession right here for Baltimore. I mean, with all the penalties that have been thrown, every time I look up, it's first or second in a mile. And they've been able to overcome it. They had the penalty on Webster that gave him the first down, but then the penalty on Orr put him in another long down situation. You can see the Ravens have run twice as many plays as the Giants have. Here's Rice. Rice out across the 35 gets five yards. So third down coming up. But even with all this back and forth, the clock continues to wind. And there's under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Very fuel, a defensive coordinator for the Giants. It's third down and 20. Monte Leach limps off the field. Litch coming. Flacco steps up, throws. That's for Pitta. And Flacco is doing it all here this afternoon. It's amazing. Joe Flacco, he's able to keep the play alive. He doesn't get pressure in the middle. And he's able to step up. And you see, he finds Pitta. And, and again, Webster down the field in defense, unable to locate the ball. Get up and snap it in a hurry. Pierce will pick up one. Linval Joseph on the stop and let's go back to that conversion on third and 20. Yeah, once Flacco once he starts scrambling around then you see the receivers they're just trying to find an open lane and Webster keeps playing the receiver and then once he feels that that receiver is looking for the ball he then turns and tries to locate it and for the most part he's been unable to do so. Ben! 36 ben! yards another big play for this Ravens offense have got six of them end zone. Smith broken up, and this time Webster's good enough. Boy, every time Flacco drops back, he's looking for number 23 of the Giants. Well, as he should be, because they've had a lot of success against him in this game, and even that one, it looked like Torrey Smith had an opportunity there to make a play. Just at the very end, Webster gets enough of the arm to knock it loose. They've thrown at Corey Webster 12 times. Third down and nine. Flacco has his caught. Another diving catch, Antoine Bolden. That was another great throw by Joe Flacco. He put that ball out perfectly to give his guy an opportunity to make a play. And that guy, Antoine Bolden. Another third and long, a conversion of 16 yards. They love it here in Baltimore. 
This is about as bad a performance as the Giants could have even dreamed about coming into this game, a game they need. Flacco to the end zone, pass broken up. Webster's out there defending Rice. On this drive alone, the Ravens have converted on third and four, third and 20, third and nine. They converted on third and seven. It was wiped out by a pass interference. They cannot defensively get off the field against Joe Flacco. No, the Ravens are keeping the ball and they're moving the ball down the field and and now are in a position to come away with even more points. And as bad as last week was, Tom Coughlin didn't think it could get any worse, but it sure has. Second and goal, Flacco has a man, Smith. And Smith is wrestled to the ground by Webster. Good for eight. How about if you're Corey Webster out there and you just know every single snap, if they're going to throw it, then you're the guy that they're targeting, and that's a that's a lonely feeling out there when you're not able to do anything about it. Ball is at the three. No pressure by this Giants defense on Joe Flacco. And when there has been some, he's been able to elude the rush and make a play. Third down and goal. Pass is incomplete off the hands of Pitta. Now it's fourth down. The field goal unit will come on for the Ravens. Again, only three divisional races were still alive at the start of the day. The NFC East, the AFC North, and the Ravens trying to end that suspense here against the Giants in the NFC West. San Francisco leading Seattle by a game and a half, and they play tonight in Seattle. 21 yard try. Rookies missed only twice all year. And today, has hit from 23 and 21. It is a 20 point game in Baltimore with the Ravens on top. That last drive was the longest drive of the season with regard to plays and time for the Ravens. 16 plays. The Giants offensively have run only 25 plays the entire game. And they're down by 20 with 518 left here in the third quarter. Tucker to kick it. Wilson waits for it. From inside the five. David Wilson out across the 25. And the big weapons on the outside, Hakeem Nix and Victor Cruz have been shut down. Well, they have. I mean, and a big part of that, as I said, is because the Giants have been unable to convert on third downs and so they've not sustained any type of drives and they haven't been able to free up those guys for the most part they've just tried to been tried to work Martellus Bennett he's had some opportunities in the middle he's failed to make some catches that would have certainly helped but you got to convert on third down if you're going to be able to do anything offensively Manning Hicks and not to work. play is made by Shockey Brown well, they have a chance to Hickson. He actually runs a good route. He's able to create some separation. It's a ball that's thrown behind. And so Hickson unable to make a play on it. I talked about the time of possession that the Baltimore Ravens have had. That's something that they just have not done a very good job of throughout this season. And as a result of their offense playing so well, they've been able to allow this defense to stay off the field and be completely rested. Second down and ten. Pass is caught. That's Cruz. And Victor Cruz is good for seven. Kerry Williams on the tackle. Third down and three. Have not converted a third down yet. And it's been an uninspiring effort by the Giants on both sides of the ball to this point. First down. Out to the 38. Their first third down conversion of the game. Uh, they say sometimes that first third down conversion is the hardest to get. Normally you're not thinking you're going to have to wait until the third quarter. 
before you get it. But we'll see now if the Giants are able to get anything going on this drive. Certainly, as you would expect, they're in the no huddle. Time is of the essence. They've got to get some big plays down the field. The Ravens know it. Shoots Victor Cruz. Now, I said it a little bit earlier, Joe, but you know, in visiting with John Harbaugh, he was very confident. He just, as a matter of fact, said, "Hey, if we don't give up big plays, then we don't feel that the Giants will score many points." And that really has been the case. The one big play they had was to Reuben Randall. That set up the one touchdown. And other than that, they've not been able to get the ball down the field, and they haven't been able to convert. And as a result, they've got only seven points. That is the only play of the game for over 20 yards by the Giants second and ten. Play clock. And now the Giants have to use a timeout just standing around and trying to get a play called Manning let the play clock wind down has to take a timeout second and ten when we come back. Baltimore is still far today on America's Game of the Week. Giants need something to happen fast. Here's Knicks incomplete. Tried that back shoulder throw, and Knicks working on Shockey Brown. It's third and ten. The Shockey Brown plays this pretty good because the Giants they've they've executed that back shoulder throw over the years about as well as anybody. Akeem Knicks he likes that physical contact, but Brown was there. To make a play on. Next comes out. Bothered by foot and knee problems all year. On third and ten. Manning. Down he goes. And it's Omar Brown with his first sack of the year. You see Omar Brown, he comes. Initially, Ahmad Bradshaw looks like he's going to pick him up. He feels threatened to the inside, so he starts to take the inside pressure and just completely turns Brown then loose. Eli Manning expecting it to be protected. And clearly it wasn't. It looked to me like Ahmad Bradshaw, he made the mistake on the play. Third Baltimore sack of the day, Jacoby Jones from inside the 20. Across the 25, that's it, 10 yard return after a 54 yard punt. Ron Williams on the stop on January 4th, that's Friday, one of the best bowl games of the year is right here on Fox. Johnny Manziel, the Heisman Trophy winner, leads Texas A&M against the Sooners. AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic, January 4th, only on Fox. Ravens have it. Up by 20 here in Baltimore. On the sideline, the Giants have been working on both Chase Blackburn and Jaquan Williams, who was in on that punt coverage team. Williams was injured on the tackle, maybe with that hit from Zach Diasi at the end. And Blackburn was limping around away from contact, trying to get downfield. So now Herzlick is in the middle of the Giants defense. Pierce carries it. Pierce is across the 30. Gain of five. Let's go to Patrick O'Neill with a game break. All right, Joe, thanks. How about those Minnesota Vikings easily beating the Texans today? All eyes on all day. Only 86 yards for Adrian Peterson. Still needs 208 yards to pass Eric Dickerson with a single season rushing record. Simple for the Vikes to make the playoffs. If the Giants lose today and the Vikes beat the Packers next Sunday, they are in. Joe, Troy, back to you. And that game is in Minnesota. They're going to blow that play dead as Jason Pierre Paul came across before the snap. Neutral zone infraction number 90 defense unabated to the quarterback. That five yard penalty will result in a first down. That's the second time now they've gotten Jason Pierre Paul. What about the Houston Texans, Joe? I mean, it wasn't much of an effort on their part either. They were playing for 
the chance to lock up home field advantage. Now they're 12 and 3. Denver, they're playing right now. They could go to 12 and 3. New England won their 11 and 4, so that's definitely not finalized in the AFC. Pierce gets it again. And on first down, Bernard gets five. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile. For only five dollars all month long. And in case you're just tuning into this game, you think somebody's put on the tape of Super Bowl 35. <laughs> this is actually yeah. 2012, but it looks like that same type game, a game that was dominated by the Ravens. Well, the Ravens have looked like the 2000 defense, that's for sure. Offensively over 400 yards on the day. Here's Pitta coming off a career day against the Broncos. He gets seven and a first down. Let's go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, some injury news for the Ravens, too. On this tough catch by Anquan Bolden, he injured his shoulder. His return is doubtful. All right, so Bolden. His return doubtful. Tandon Doss is out with a high ankle sprain. Torrey Smith and Jacoby Jones are still out there for the Ravens, who have a first down at their own 48. Flacco in trouble for one of the few times, chased by Rivers, and he throws it away. Coughlin wants grounding. But he's not going to get it. Well, this has been an impressive performance by the Baltimore Ravens, and as we know, it's been a disappointing three weeks for them and not being able to win and clinch the North. It's been right out there in front of them. But hey, I can speak from experience, Joe. It doesn't take much. In fact, just a game like this that you can recapture that confidence, and this team certainly feels incapable of doing all that they had hoped to. Here's Pierce on second down. Pierce over the right side gets three. Meanwhile, there was a chance that Ray Lewis, the 12 time Pro Bowl inside linebacker and two time defensive player of the year, could come back in this game. But with a win here, the Ravens will guarantee themselves another home game in the playoffs by winning the North. And that's the that's the carrot out there for Ray Lewis to get back for the postseason. Yeah, they'll get to rest him another week next week, which will only help them. And they miss him out there. I mean, as Ray or as uh, Ed Reed said, he's the engine for that defensive unit. On third down, here's Rice out of the backfield. Another conversion. And this Giants defense is just getting ripped apart. Stevie Brown on the stop. A 17 yard pickup and that is how the third quarter will come to an end. Great on third down today. Are the Baltimore Ravens and Ray Rice having a nice game. 27 7. After three back after this from your local Fox station. Another bad day for the Giants on the heels of their shutout at Atlanta. Ravens offense is clicking. It's been clicking from the start. Their first possession was a 14 play drive. Here's Ray Rice over the right side. He gets five yards. I know coming into this game John Harbaugh had said that they felt that they had gotten the ball to Ray Rice. You know when they had the opportunities even though that had been a criticism and whether fair or unfair I do know this Joe. Good things happen when he has the ball in his hands whether that's from the backfield as a runner or as a receiver he's had himself a nice afternoon including the playoffs Troy the Ravens when Ray Rice touches the ball 20 or more times are 24 and five. Here's Rice again he's about a yard shot of first down when he touches it for fewer than 20 times there are only eight games over the 500 mark. He's got 25 touches today and they are well on their way to win number 10 on the season and an AFC North title. It's third down and one. Dad! How about 10 out of 14 on third down for the Ravens. Wide open is Pitt. And he's got a first down as he's knocked out by Hosley after picking up six. 
Well, it's all due to the fact that that offensive line's protecting Joe Flacco. He was working the opposite side of the field, but because there was no pressure, he was able to get all the way to the backside, get the ball to Pitta, and pick up that first down. Giants are on their way to their lowest output offensively of the season. Ray Rice. And really, Troy Ray Rice is the prototypical guy now in the NFL, the kind of player everybody's looking for. You can split him out wide. He's a tremendous running back. He's not a big guy, but he's tough and strong. And, and he, with so much room on these offenses, he's the guy that everybody wants. Well he's so you're right I mean he's so good he's a powerful guy and as we've seen I mean a great runner but he's excellent out of the backfield as a receiver last year led the NFL and yards from scrimmage he's a he's a tough guy and an outstanding football player second down and five Rice again this time there's nowhere to go human Europe is in there to make the stop now how about if the Giants wake up tomorrow when they find out that they're still alive in the playoff race and you know the way that they came out here in this game today and what we've seen currently I mean it's it's just a team that doesn't look like they want to play into January. I mean after the, the beating that they took last week against Atlanta to still have an opportunity and not put forth a better effort than they have here this afternoon is really something. Fourth drive of over 10 plays for the Ravens. Here's Rice. It's up to him to try and make something happen, and he won't. On third down, he stopped. Antrell Roll was there with Human Ura. A loss of three. It's fourth down, and the field goal unit will come on to try and make it a 23-point game. Well, the previous drive, when they settled for a field goal, they took almost eight minutes off the clock, and this is another drive that they've taken over six minutes off the clock and so yeah they've methodically moved the ball down the field and haven't gotten touchdowns but they've settled for field goals and more importantly they've run this time down 30 yard try for Justin Tucker who is three for three. Ray Rice having a day. Bob Bradshaw in the background, not so much. 37, Ravens on top. Almost time to sit around the fire maybe with family. Christmas just around the corner. Good food, pies and cakes, whatever it is on this upcoming week. Christmas Eve coming up tomorrow. Christmas on Tuesday. And from all of us at Fox, to all of you, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. This is not going to have the game for the Giants as Wilson will take an aim. Fireworks for the Ravens all day today. They have had their fun on their way to an AFC North title here against the Giants. Fewest yards that the Giants offense have put up. Week 9 against Pittsburgh, 182. Hakeem Nix has been shut down completely. Here's Bradshaw running with that bad knee. I thought they might get a lift offensively with his energy active and in the lineup. Got a brace on the left knee. He's good for six. Ellerby on the tackle, second and four. Still a three score game. to step up is gone for Hickson and the pass broken up. Jackie Brown was back there with Ed Reed. It'll be third down. Another play where Dominic Hickson had gotten in behind Brown and, and Eli I know he's moving but he's just unable to get anything on the ball to get it down the field. We've seen that a couple times in this ball game and really we've seen it throughout the last several games normally the Giants were a team that make you pay if you let a receiver get in behind your secondary but the Giants just have not been able to do it as consistently. Third down and four. Pass is broken up. Randall was there it was knocked away and on fourth down the Giants are going to punt it. 
Ruben Randall almost pulled that in with one arm after that initial effort at the catch. But well defensed by the Ravens and it's fourth down. Normally when there's a game like this you can point to the offense not doing their part or the defense or one particular unit and it's just been a collective effort by this Giants team. They've been awful in all three phases. Nine possessions. This is the eighth punt. And they've had six three and outs. So they can't do anything offensively. Defensively, it's been Flacco, Rice, Smith, Jones. Ravens having fun up 23. Tom Coughlin was frustrated after the shutout loss at Atlanta with an opportunity to win their final two and get into the playoffs at the very least as a wild card to come out here and give this effort look as flat as they've looked. Can't imagine what his post game conference will look like and sound like after this one as Pierce gains two. The Giants will not be eliminated here today because of the Cowboys loss if the Giants go on to lose this game again we talked about this earlier it gives the Cowboys a chance knowing all week that if they go into Washington and win next week on Sunday they can win the NFC East the winner of that game will win the division that's amazing I mean it's amazing when you look at the teams that have lost feeling like they had to control their destiny and yet they Come to work next week with a chance to make it out. Here's Pierce, the rookie. One guy to beat, and he cannot beat Hosley. Forced out of bounds, short of the end zone. You see the lead draw that they run. Vontae leads the fullback. He leads the way. They've got everybody up there anticipating run and once you get beyond that initial surge there's just nobody there. Bernard Pierce hits it. <laughs> what a performance by this Ravens team. They marked him out at the one. Mosley didn't give up. He saved the touchdown. Now Rice in a tailback. They give it to him and Blackburn made the hit and holds Rice out of the end zone. 531 total yards put up by the Ravens in this game. Blackburn can't get off the field. That was the longest rush of the season against the Giants 78 yards by Pierce and the longest rush of the season for Baltimore and now just a yard away from if this isn't already a blowout adding to this lead and uh, you said it I mean the Ravens look like they could beat anybody the way they're playing right now well they do and they, they got to come back and, and do it next week and then when they get on into the playoffs but this has been you know, obviously very, very impressive. They showed this kind of consistency and this explosiveness offensively early in the season, and then it kind of went away, and they would have spurts of it. But this is what they were hoping for when they made Jim Caldwell the offensive coordinator. Didn't happen last week, but this has just been a great team victory for this organization in every facet. Pierce put back in the game. Pierce gets it and comes up short again. Rivers on the stop. It'll be third and goal. And I guess if you want to lob one compliment at the Giants, they're not rolling over on this first and goal from the one. It's now third down and goal, and we'll see if the Ravens continue to try and pound it in. Here's still in a tailback. Flacco keeps it. Down he goes. Keelan Nook is there for the Giants, and they do get a defensive stop. Hosley saved the touchdown on the long run by Pierce of 78 yards. 
And then the Giants defense steps up and keeps the Ravens out of the end zone. Yeah, I don't know that there's going to be any real positives coming out of this game, but for the Giants defensively, who look like they've been sleepwalking ever since this game started, that was a good stop. 29 yard try by the place kicker. He's three for three on the day, Justin Tucker. Now four for four, and it's 33 7. Under seven and a half to go. Ravens in charge, really, from the beginning. Touchdown, Torrey Smith. Blacko's going to air it out. What a catch! And Rice has got a touchdown. America's game of the week as the Giants have been outscored 67 to 7 over the last two games. And the Baltimore Ravens started with that 14 play drive to begin their day. And they have had long, sustained efforts against this Giants defense. And offensively, New York has been able to do very little. Only one touchdown on the day, and it belongs to Wilson, who will let this one go over his head. The drive will start at the 20. This February, NASCAR returns to Fox. The 55th running of the Great American Race. The world's best drivers compete for auto racing's greatest title, the Daytona 500, February 24th only, right here on Fox. Before the game, Joey Logano, Penske Racing, and the Sprint Cup champion, Brad Keselowski, who grew up in Michigan and grew up a Lions fan. Those two guys are teammates. And Lions made history last night with Calvin Johnson, but it's been a lost season for Detroit, the team that made the playoffs a year ago. Here's Manning throwing incomplete with Randall. Bennett, the closest to it, and fell in between them. You know, coming into this game, Joe, I was thinking about the Giants. If if they failed to make the playoffs, you know, what a disappointment that would be for them considering some of the teams that they've beaten, you know, whether that's San Francisco or Green Bay and you know, good wins. And well, I gotta tell you, after watching this game tonight. They certainly haven't played like they deserve any chance to get into the playoffs, yet they'll still be alive, as you said, at Paul in this game. Bradshaw's ripped to the ground in the backfield by Nada. And that's what Bradshaw got. Nada. Back to the line and it's third down. It's been a long time since I've seen one team just dominate the game the way they have. I mean, I know Tom Coughlin felt like they got dominated pretty good in that loss last week. And and they did, but this has been at a whole different level. Third down and ten. And they're coming after Eli. Pass is caught, and what a hit by Ed Reed, and a flag flies. Victor Cruz on the catch. Cruz is able to get back to his feet. And it looked like they threw the flag on that hit by Ed Reed. He got hit pretty good, Joe. I was surprised he got up as quickly as he did. And right into his chest. And there's some contact with the head. Now he comes in with the helmet, and it's clearly helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Just visiting with Ed Reed about that the other day, and he said that since you know that fine, and initially he was going to be suspended, and that it has affected the way that he has played. That he's thinking out there, he's not a dirty player, but he does play very, very aggressively. But he says it's in the back of his mind and definitely has impacted the way he's played. He came in and you try to jar a guy loose of the ball, and that's the way he's been taught throughout his career, and it's been an adjustment for him. It's an 11 yard. Completion plus a 15 yard penalty. Here's Bradshaw. And he's brought to the ground by McPhee. Let's go to Kurt with a game break. Well, you guys have done a good job of breaking down the NFC playoff picture. Here's a look at the AFC. These are the six teams that have made the playoffs. Divisions are all wrapped up. It's a matter of seeding. 
Both New England and Denver still have outside chances to overtake Houston for the top spot in the AFC, depending on what happens next week in Week 17. Thanks, Kurt. That's all that's hanging out there in the AFC. A little more complicated in the NFC is Manning finds Jernigan underneath. Terrell Jernigan has a Giants first down. When you watch these last five minutes of the game, there's a part of you that kind of says, okay, well, this game's essentially over. You know, maybe these guys, Eli Manning and some of them, shouldn't even be on the field playing. In fact, they've got a chance to still make the playoffs, but as bad as they've been, my guess is Tom Coughlin's just saying, hey, we, we've got to try to finish this game up with something positive. Steps up, gonna run, and slide short of a first down. Eli Manning, if he does not get one into the end zone the rest of this game through the air, it'll be his fourth game this season without a touchdown pass. He had only one of those all of last year. And he has been inconsistent along with this team. Victor Cruz is back out there in the slot. Hand off to Bradshaw. Bob Bradshaw, a nice gain on second and two of 11. Ihedibo was there for the Ravens first down under four and a half to play. And now timeout Ravens. Tom Coughlin talked about what he would say to the team look we're a game better than we were a year ago he was going to say that to the team last night when they were seven and seven it was considered a road game and this was a 99 yard touchdown catch and run by Victor Cruz in a win over the Jets then a week 17 win over the Cowboys they were in they won the next four including the Super Bowl today it's a much different story for Victor Cruz this Giants offense and this Giants team in general. Yeah this the Giants just have to figure out why they're so inconsistent. You know I mean it happens every year. It seems like after eight games this is a team that's six and two and playing really well and then they find themselves just trying to hang on or you know fight to get into the playoffs but it's every year and somehow they've got to figure out why that is. It's hard to win games in this league but the story seems to be written for the Giants before the season begins every year. Here's Manning. And he is tipped incomplete. Randall, the intended receiver. Kerry Williams got his hand on it, and Ed Reed was almost there for the interception. Yeah, normally these balls get tipped up like this, and you've got a guy like Ed Reed back there. It's going to end in an interception. And you know, go back to the Ravens and how well they have played. And this is a this is a great game offensively to get things going. And then even defensively, because they are starting to get some guys back. They've played pretty well, really, since their bye week. They're starting to get healthier at just the right time. At least they get a guy like Ray Lewis coming back. Second down and ten. Here's Bradshaw. Over the right side, and Bob Bradshaw is wrestled down with the Giants' first down by Corey Graham. So you look at the stats, and it's not a pretty picture for the Giants. It is awfully pretty for the Ravens. And for John Harbaugh, five years as head coach in the NFL, head coach of the Ravens, and five times in the playoffs, and they were really a drop pass away from going to the Super Bowl and facing the Giants last year when they almost got a road win at New England in the championship game. Manning to the end zone. The pass broken up. Reuben Randall the intended target. Shockey Brown was there along with Ed Reed. Well that's why Joe I think this game offensively for the Ravens was so important. I mean yes defensively they've been really good in this game but this isn't this is a good defense it's not a great defense and that's really been the identity for this team for so long and for them to ultimately do some damage in the postseason I think it's going to be because of Joe Flacco and their ability to outscore people. This is a this was a good step in giving them the confidence to do that. Manning. Floats it to the end zone for a touchdown. Dominic 
picks it. And Manning will end this day with at least one touchdown pass, and the Giants close the gap just a little bit. Dominic Hicks and his been one of the few guys who's really done anything. He had a nice game last week and he's been targeted a few times in this game and he's able to secure this one for the touchdown. His second touchdown catch of the season. He's had a tough time staying healthy but when he's healthy he has the ability of making some eye popping catches. To good hands. 33 14 next week on Fox NFL Sunday with Playoff spot still up in the air. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. Regular season comes to a close, full slate of games. The matchups and times are subject to change, so check your local listings for the games in your area. There are the matchups, but when they're played at this point, we don't know. And we also don't know which game will be the national game that night. But that said, the Giants will still have a chance at a playoff spot and the NFC East it looks like is going to come down to that battle in Landover Maryland between the Cowboys and the Redskins. Yeah what a scene that'll be there at FedEx Field with the Washington Redskins with an opportunity to win the division something they have not done since 1999 and if they're all, if they are able to do that and then to play a home playoff game it's been a long time I guess since that 99 season that they've been able to do that as well so they're excited there and the Cowboys after losing today in a tough overtime game to the Saints to find themselves with a chance to win the division as well they're pretty excited you know you keep waking up the, the Giants now would have lost five out of their last seven and to still have a chance is really something that onside kick try is right into the gut of Corey Graham. So the Ravens will have it. And they will try and take time off the clock each side with two timeouts remaining. And Ray Rice will go out and try to get over the 100 yard mark on the day as Tyrod Taylor takes over a quarterback for Joe Flacco. And Flacco will end his day 25 of 36, 309 yards, two touchdowns. No interceptions and a lot of really good throws all afternoon and evening long. Here's Rice. Ray Rice pushes the pile forward inside the 35. And we go to Kurt with a game break. Well, just a reminder that the top seed in the NFC, the Atlanta Falcons. Second time in the last three seasons they've done that. The victory last night over Detroit. Trent's home field advantage throughout the playoffs, so the road through the NFC will go through the Georgia Bowl. Joe Troy Pan. All right, so we know that, and that is a tough team to beat, the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. They're tough in Atlanta, and if Matt Ryan continues to play like he's played this year, you know, not a lot of people talking about his performance. He's been exceptional all year long. Anthony Allen in a tailback. He gets it, carries it for a first down. Ray Rice, Troy, is over 100 yards on the day. And that means that the Ravens now have two 100 yard rushers in this same game. Pierce is at 123, and it's the second time that the Ravens have been able to boast two 100 yard rushers in the same game, the last time in December of 08 against the Cowboys. With McGahee and McClain. Two minutes left. Ravens wrapping up the AFC North. Giants with another disappointing effort here on the road. Two minutes left in this game, and it's kneel down time for the Ravens with Tyrod Taylor in a quarterback. Producer of today's game, Richie Zients. The director is Rich Russo. Thanks to Steve Horn, our editorial consultant in the booth. The associate director is Jake Jolivet. Rich Gross, the broadcast associates Bentley Elliott, Alex Olson, technical producers Dave Hill, technical directors Colby Bourgeois, the audio mixer, the best in the biz, Fred Aldis. Studio show is produced by Bill Richards, directed by Bob Levy, and my thanks to Ed Sfida, our statistician, Dave Schwalbe, our spotter in the booth, stage manager Chuck Damire, 
here in Baltimore. We welcome in a new audience and really the only thing to tell you is the action is pretty much over for the rest of this game. That's us and we know that the Ravens have wrapped up the AFC North and Troy for those that are just ducking into this game. This has been all <laughs> Baltimore Ravens over the Giants today. Yeah, it sure has. I mean after losing three in a row they wanted to come out here today in front of their home crowd and wrap up the division and, and they have made it look easy and it's anything but it's hard to win 10 games in this league in a season and yet the Ravens have done it once again. Last week Joe Flacco said after losing their third in a row he felt like they were 0 and 14. Well he doesn't feel that way today and he's a big reason why they won just an outstanding performance on his part and he's a guy without a contract beyond this season they could franchise tag him going into next year but a player who's been with that man John Harbaugh is head coach all five years he started every game since he was drafted in the first round out of Delaware back in 2008. He got this team to the playoffs in his first season. He's gotten them to the playoffs the four years after that as well, including here this year as AFC North champions and their second straight divisional title. We'll take a break and come back here before the OT.